So Power Rangers Time Force is one of the best seasons of the franchise, probably in my top 10 and probably in your top 10, or maybe it's not, but Power Rangers Time Force is one of the strongest seasons of the franchise, with excellent writing, acting, performances, all kinds of stuff people remember about Time Force. So when I heard it was getting a sequel graphic novel at the start of the year, I was really excited. And then I forgot it happened because everything else happened in the world. And then I remembered we were getting the sequel comic again and I got really excited. So Power Rangers Sins of the Future is a very, very interesting graphic novel where I thought this was going to be a Jen and Wes story, but it's mostly a Jen story, which is really good because I love Jen as a character. I love Aaron Callahill's performance as Jen. I just love the character Jen. She's such an awesome character. So this story is more of a Jen story than it is a Jen and Wes story. So the cover kind of throws you for a loop. Spoilers if you're watching this review without reading the comic. Now, just like my Psychopath review, I'm probably not going to be using any panels from Sins of the Future during this review, mostly because this graphic novel is over 90 pages long and it will take me forever to reread it a couple of times and find every panel I'm talking about during post-editing and stuff like that. But I want you guys to read this comic for yourselves and experience the artwork and the panels for yourselves. I'm sure you'll have a blast. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then I'm sure you can figure out what I'm talking about eventually. But anyway, guys, on with the review of Power Rangers Sins of the Future. Now, going into Power Rangers Sins of the Future, I wasn't sure what to expect when reading this graphic novel. All I had to go off was the cover pages, the preview pages, and stuff like that. I was pretty much going in blind with only knowing little information and I'm really glad that the press of Boom Studios and everyone else did a really good job at keeping stuff under wraps but the big meat and potatoes like the plot twist and stuff like that that doesn't happen until you get like halfway through the comic and you get to like the second act and the third act to figure out what is going on so Power Rangers Sins of the Future starts off in the past and the future where you have Jen giving this giant epilogue and it bounces between the past and the future. So we see a little bit of Wes and Alex and Jen with their daily lives there cleaning up the bots that are roaming the cities and you get to see the romantic life between Jen and Wes which is really nice. I'm glad the comic focuses on their relationship and pushes it to even further so you see them advancing their relationship. So when Jen bounces between the past and the future, you see her talking to Captain Logan, I believe their name is, and he goes over Jen saying, Jen won't need to jump to the to the past, and I nearly said future, jump to the past anymore because he's got a special mission for her, or a special job, and he teases about Hyperforce Academy, where he says, in a couple of years, we want you to be a professor, professor for this, like, high school academy and we want you to be on board but you can't go back into the past and you might have to call off your relationship with your boyfriend and we'll have to wipe his memories about the future and stuff like that and Jen is struggling struggling to come into terms with it and she plans on telling Wes that it's she's going to break up with him on that night but instead they get attacked by the black Time Force Ranger and the Black Time Force Ranger is one big mystery that you try and figure out who it is because what the Black Time Force Ranger does is pretty interesting and I kind of wish we dove more into the character. We find out who it is which I'll get into later down the line but I really did like who the Black Time Force Ranger is. I did have mixed feelings but once they explained who it is and their motives behind everything it was a decent twist. So the Black Time Force Ranger attacks, Jen goes back to the past to try and figure something out and stuff has changed and it's really interesting what's changed because her enemies, not her enemies, her friends, her other Time Force Rangers view her as the enemy and they say that she's the one that killed Alex which is a really interesting twist and I thought we'd be playing around with it more in this comic but Nadira shows up she bails her out and you meet Nadira from the Hyperforce era which is really cool because you meet Nadira from the Hyperforce era which I kind of wish they dived more into but if you look at the panels, you see some sneaky cameos from Hyperforce here and there that hints at the future. Well, there's a couple. There's like maybe three or four Hyperforce references 
in this comic. There's not a lot of them, but I appreciate the ones that I noticed in this comic. So Nadira shows up and they have to go around traveling into this um, Time Force HQ to figure out what the heck is going on. So while this is going on, Eric and Wes are trying to figure out what's going on with Jen, the Black Time Force Ranger, and then, and then they're suddenly attacked and killed off. Apparently they're killed off because the time the Black Time Force Ranger is this vengeance hungry person that wants to try and fix the mistakes of Jen, which we'll get into in a little bit. We'll get into a little bit with everything going on. So when Nadira and Jen invade the Time Force HQ to get the information they're looking for, this is where the comic became a little bit confusing with me because so much happens in this point of time like you get so many reveals you get so many fake outs it gets a little hard to keep up with one of my favorite fake outs is you see Ransick talking in front of Jen and Jen sort of freaks out and Nadira says hey if this was my dad in his prime he would have destroyed you easily which is kind of true because the rangers in time force couldn't defeat Ransick like he won that battle and he turned himself in because he was becoming a monster in front of Nadira and stuff like that but I, I really like that line and I just want to see Ransick just destroy someone whether it be Time Force or any other ranger seeing how they hold the, how they'd hold their own against that character so when they sneak into the Time Force HQ to get some answers all this battles start taking place and then the Black Time Force ranger shows up again and you have this weird thing where they're sort of shifting between time and you see different events happening and one of them is the dragon sword so it looks really cool visually but confusing it does like i said visually it looks cool but it does get a bit confusing and hard to keep up with especially for someone like me where there's like so much plot being shoveled down your mouth so much and it's a little bit hard to keep up with maybe that's just me i don't know so we eventually get the reveal of the black time force ranger and it's alex's sister now i'm very very mixed about this being alex's sister but i do like how it's uh brought into the plot the thing is when we found out that it's alex's sister i thought oh no it's a self-inserted family member we had no idea that existed and now we're finding the reveal of her and we're gonna have to care about her now and stuff like that but the writing makes it work so I think this is a better reveal than it was someone from like Hyperforce or an alternate evil timeline version of someone the whole time. Like this character makes sense when you think about it and I'd rather have this than having like this weird evil certain paradox events happen because when all the scans were coming out and the preview pages I was thinking maybe this is like Jen Scott's gone rogue as the Black Time Force Ranger, but how she's connected to Alex and Wes and stuff like that is really cool. I really do like that connection, and she becomes like a pivotal member of Time Force moving forward, so I really do like her involvement. So you find out that the Chronomorph that the Black Ranger has was invented by Frax. It's one of his devices, which, okay, I'll buy it because he's on the cover, so he had some sort of involvement in this thing but the frax thing i'll get into later down the line because i have mixed feelings about it but it is what it is but i should also bring up sira alex's um sister she is going through this weird time warp thing where she is sort of like day after tomorrow where live die repeat where she keeps witnessing alex's death rebirth and when he changes and stuff like that she witnesses that every time and there's nothing she can do to change it she tried to change it but it didn't really work and when she did change it it resulted in jen i think killing alex which has made the time shift in her morpher which is really mixed up and weird that whatever happened happened and that's why time like time travel stories they are cool but they are a bit weird for me like I like time travel stories but sometimes they can be a little bit too complicated here and there. So then we get to the final act of the comic where Nadira, Jen and Sira confront Frax. Well kind of Frax. So Frax made this weird Frankenstein clone of himself, this robot, this mutant thing. It looks weird. It looks really weird. It looks like a boss from Final Fantasy or some sort of anime. I really do dig the design. So 
this thing was meant to finish Frax's work and he's just crazy, he's smirking out. Sira confronts him and she's grabbed and she's just thrown into the pre prehistoric era where you think she's dead, she's a goner, she's done for. And this is where Jen has this awesome moment where she says she's going to make him pay for everyone he's hurt and it's really cool. Jen has this really big speech where she says the past should be kept safe in the past and that's a it's like a really cool panel where you see her picturing like Alex, Wes and Sira, like all these people that are important to her which is really awesome and she cuts down the weird mutant fracks blowing it up and then everything's safe like the day is saved and they stop the paradox from happening which is what the Morpher creates so they defeat the ghost of Frax and the weird freaking robot and then out of nowhere Sira shows up from the time portal and what happens is she's back to original age well Jen walks through the prehistoric era and pulls her out and she's back to original age and I really really do like that like things are back to normal after like she pulls her out and the time force like they're back in that room and she's back to her original age and uh, Sarah says she learned to accept my past to enjoy the memories of Alex and appreciate the moment so that was a nice moment appreciating the moment so things are back to normal and Jen and Sarah are best friends again and things are all fine and dandy so yeah the final few pages ends with Jess and Wes getting married and it's a really nice moment like the artwork of Jen in her dress and Wes in the tux they are really really cool looking artwork so this comic overall it was pretty solid I mean it's a time force novel like a time force book of time travel so there are going to be some complicated parts that might go over your head if you don't think too deep into it like me so that's on me but Overall, I think this was a really solid story, and I'm glad that Time Force got a sequel, and I liked where it went. I mean, it had a few mixed bits here and there, had a lot of comedy here and there, had a lot of nice touching moments here and there, and I like seeing Jen have her own journey and her own adventure that she goes on, so that was really cool. So overall, I really enjoyed this comic, and I can't wait to see which graphic novel we'll get next year, because ever since Soul of the Dragon came out, we've been getting one every year, so... I'm curious to see which one we'll get next year later down the line so we'll probably find out early next year when we'll find out when that's going to come out but either way I really enjoyed this graphic novel and you guys should check it out and definitely give it a read that's for sure. Anyway guys I think that's going to wrap up this review here if you enjoyed this review hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you guys around peace out take care and I'll see you guys later bye.